How do and welcome back. My name is Andrew Hancock and I'm a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with the VMware products uh, since their inception in 1998. So that's 23 years I've been working with the VMware product line. Some of you may say if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a sticker rock from Blackpool. I've also written over 100 articles for Experts Exchange and won many other awards and accolades. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program for the last 11 years and more recently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last two. Welcome back and in today's VMware Hancock's Half Hour uh, I'm going to show you how to add um, VMware vSphere Hypervisor ESXi 7.0.2 host to VMware vCenter Server 7. Now, if you go all the way back to part one, uh, I showed you how to create our ASXi 7.0.2 installation on our Dell PowerEdge R730. And we're still using the same Dell PowerEdge R730. And here it is here, ASXi 007.sarus-consultants.co.uk. And in the last part, in part 21, I showed you how to an install and deploy vCenter Server 7. Um, so we use a web browser and we actually basically specify our FQDN. Remember, of course, that I've been nagging you about DNS and A records and ensuring that your uh, FQDN is actually basically safely uh, registered uh, and you've created an A record in DNS. So using that FQDN and um, with a web browser, um, this is a page that you should see. I'm going to click launch vSphere client, HTML5. Of course, there is no uh, flex or flash anymore. Uh, we're now pure HTML5. And I'm going to log in as that SSO account. But of course, you have documented that password that you're using. Uh, so I'm just going to log in with that complex password and we will be greeted with the vCenter server uh, dashboard and I'm, I don't want to update my last pass passwords and I've got somebody telling me on Steam Zaki2 is playing Civilization it's popped up again anyway I'll leave that in or cut that out this is live and I did sort of kind of turn around and say that I'm just going to go raw I'm not going to cut these bits and pieces out Okay, so you may remember in part 21 that we did have a, uh, a VMware vSphere VAPI endpoint health pop-up. Um, and I turned around and said that that's probably likely to go away when things settle down. So we haven't actually basically got um, any any issues basically going, going on there. Um, so this is what we would expect to see. Um, nothing really going on much. Uh, vCenter server 7.saras-consultants.co.uk. Um, uh, and we haven't got any hosts in there at the moment. We've not got not no data centers. Um, it's all all blank and vanilla. Um, now I do have an article uh, that shows you how to add um, ESXi hosts that I'll put again in the steps in the description. Now this was actually basically based on an earlier version of vCenter Server 6 when we had something called the vSphere client or the thick vSphere client. The procedure is exactly the same. Um, however, of course, the GUI obviously has trained, uh, uh, trained, uh, changed uh, very much. I did actually like the vSphere client because it did actually basically give you um, some hints and tips along the way as to what you had to do. And they seem to have now actually basically disappeared um, uh, from within um, from within the HTML client. Maybe they'll put them back one day. Anyway, so I'm going to cut and paste our data center name, EE Training Data Center, and I'm going to show you how we do this, um, which is a similar procedure. The GUI's just basically changed. So the first thing we need to do is to create a data center. Now, a data center really is a collection of objects, a collection of hosts, or a collection of clusters. And sometimes it actually basically makes sense to um, match the name of the data center to what's actually in the data center. So, for instance, um, if you've got 
two data centers in your organization and you call one production and one disaster recovery or you call them by floors of the building or location name uh, for instance uh, London and Chicago um, then it would actually basically make sense that you actually basically call the data centers accordingly um, it's not really gonna again it is just a visible reference for the inventory so we right click vCenter and we click new data center and I'm gonna basically call our data center the EE training data center followed by OK and you'll see some changes uh, in the inventory and there you go you can you, I'm sure you're better make out that you've got like a picture of a data center two little buildings side by side that says EE training data center and again there's there's nothing in that uh, other than basic turns around it tells us the hosts the virtual machines clusters networks and data stores at the moment it's blank there's nothing in it uh, so we now need basically to add a host or we can create a cluster uh, a cluster is a cluster of hosts uh, where you can share resources uh, CPU and memory in a cluster but at the moment I'm just going to add a host I only have one host so it doesn't really make um, there's no point really creating a cluster of one host at the moment so you can click add host here or you can go to actions and you can click add host here so I'll, I'll do it this way rather than clicking add host I'm going to go over here say actions and I'm going to click add host so now host name IP address well we've already had that discussion about FQDNs so I'm actually going to use an SF I'm going to use an FQDN ESXi 007 Cyrus consultants.co.uk and previously I've made sure that our host can resolve itself and I've also basically checked to see that our vCenter server can resolve this as well and I'm going to click next again this is the username and password root username and password for the ESXi host so I'm going to specify that complex password that I keep forgetting and I'm going to click next now that's a good sign um, the fact that it's actually basically prompted you with a warning about the certificate store of vCenter server cannot verify the certificate and that's because the certificate is self-signed by VMware and it can't trust it um, so I know that it's signed by VMware uh, and I'm quite happy with that for the moment and in a later video I'll show you how we can change these certificates for our own rolled certificate so if you don't get a security alert you're probably likely to get a message that says cannot find the server or the server's not responding um, so check first of all the server's on and also check that um, the FQDN that you've specified um, can be resolved from vCenter server so I'm going to click yes so that's a good sign uh, that it's now actually basically telling us that the vendor is Dell uh, the model is a Dell PowerEdge R730 uh, the version is VMware ESXi 7.0.2 and it's found all these virtual machines that are currently running and if I just drop back to our virtual machines here then you can actually basically see that these are all the virtual machines that are running on our host do I want to proceed so I'm going to click next uh, so this is a evaluation version of vCenter server 7 that we're using that I showed you at the beginning of part 21 um, and it's an evaluation version of ESXi that we're using as well so yes I know that the license expires in 60 days uh, and I'm going to click next um, not going to actually basically use lockdown mode for the moment and we'll talk about that in another video so I'm just going to click next again and where do I put up at the virtual machine locations well at the moment I want to put them all in the EE training data center and I'm going to click next so okay it's now basically just giving us a summary of what it's actually basically found now these are objects um, that are actually basically connected to our ESXi 007 a lot of people get confused and think that data stores virtual machine networks are connected to vCenter server v 
vCenter server is just a management server. It's a single pane of glass that manages all our ESX hosts. Our data stores and our virtual machine networks are actually connected to our ESX host. They're not connected to vCenter server. And I see that question a lot about data stores being connected to vCenter. They're not connected to the data center and they're not connected to the vCenter server. Uh, they're connected to the host. But when you add the host to vCenter server, vCenter server has a visibility of the data stores and the virtual machine networks through the host. So I'm going to click finish. And this is when it will start to add. You can see down there 80%, um, 90%. And it's basically disappeared and it says disconnected. So now I can expand our host and we can see all our virtual machines. And if I basically click the host and I click VMs, then I can now see all our virtual machines. At that point, there's no real need anymore um, to be using and accessing our host directly anymore. So I'm going to big X that because all our management should now be performed via vCenter server. If you perform management functions and make changes directly on the host using the HTML client, um, you can get issues basically with it's synchronizing in the inventory or you get a, an inventory which is out of sync between host and vCenter server. So once you've added it to an inventory of vCenter server, then start performing all your management functions from vCenter server. So this was a short one today and that's as far as I'm going to go in this video before we come back and we actually basically start looking at some of the features that we can use within our vCenter server. So thanks very much for watching me again. This has been part 22. Um, if you need a recap to go back to part 21 and see how to install and deploy vCenter Server 7, then that's in part 21. Um, again, it's been a pleasure as always. Uh, thank you very much for watching me and you all keep safe out there uh, because I know that the, the Delta version of COVID-19 is on the rise again. It certainly is here within the UK. I wish you all the best and I wish your family safe. So once again, from me, thank you very much and goodbye.